Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Claire. I'm a contract librarian on assignment here with NOAA Central Library. This seminar series is offered through the NOAA Central Library Seminar Program, which provides an educational forum for the presentation of ideas, research updates, and news in support of NOAA's mission. Before we start, I have a few technical tips for attendees. Just so you are aware, you are muted and you are not able to unmute. However, if you have a question, you can type it into the question panel and we'll get to those during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. If you are having any audio or visual issues, if you can't hear the speaker or see the slides, please try logging off and back on and that will solve most issues in GoToWebinar. As a reminder, this is being recorded. If you would like to revisit this seminar or view previous seminars, you can find them on our YouTube channel. Now I'm going to turn it over to Jay, who's going to get the presentation started. Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you are. I hope you're having a great NOAA day. Thank you all for your time today. Uh, especially thank you to my uh, wonderful ProTech team. Also, thank you to Mitch Ross, who was the uh, godfather of ProTech. Uh, retired as the AGO director some years ago. He started the ProTech idea almost 10 years ago. Uh, also, thank you to Jeff Thomas and Kelly Mabe, our AGO leadership, for their continued support of the program. Uh, it really does help out. Uh, I apologize to all of you. I try and do this as an annual event, and somehow it just didn't happen in 2021. So we'll catch you up on uh, what we've been doing to date and some stuff in the future. Uh, and also, I think uh, we're going to have we'll have more than ample time. Uh, for questions and answers after my presentation. Uh, we'll have uh, a little look at our, our new websites. If you haven't uh, gone to the ProTech websites recently, please check them out and uh, bookmark the new websites. The format has changed. Some of the information has changed a little bit, but we're still being pretty transparent. And with that, uh, this brief is for everybody, uh, internal, external to NOAA. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll talk about the current program status and end with I know what some of you are really hoping for is what's going on with ProTech 2.0, uh, and nothing we discussed today will be procurement sensitive. Next slide. So our NOAA primary objectives, obviously, uh, leave the Earth, leave the world rather, in Earth system observations, uh, minimize the impact of severe weather, and obviously increase our uh, sustainable contributions to our economy uh, through fisheries, marine resource management, mapping, exploration, observation, and prediction. Next slide. So as a background for some of you, this is what AGO does, right? So we balance our mission, NOAA's mission, with our fiduciary duty, right? We wanna make sure that we carry out the mission, protect the public interest, uh, find and, and improve on efficiency and effectiveness, operate with integrity and transparency. And what we've been doing with AGO and the, the ProTech program has been helping out with that for the past five years or so, is to move just from service delivery to core competencies, with acquisition and to support our NOAA clients uh, throughout the entire financial assistance life cycle uh, and build those partnerships with strategic sourcing, engagement, and consolidation requirements where possible, uh, and then move our focus for acquisition uh, from beyond just formation of a contract to management through the entire life cycle. We still have some challenges in AGO. These are no surprise to any of you who work with acquisition across the government. Uh, requirements definition and validation uh, along with IGCEs uh, is critical. Uh, we had a fair amount of transactions, FY21, over 19,000 transactions. That number, of course, includes uh, some admin stuff like closeouts and modifications. But we obligated 1.91 billion in FY21, and everybody did a fantastic job even operating under the uh, strictures uh, that uh, working from home that COVID imposed upon us. Uh, we also anticipate additional NOAA funding, hopefully in FY22 and FY24, all the way through. Uh, and you can track what's going on with the spending bills uh, from separate sources. Uh, some of the issues we always work on in, in the government, uh, spend analysis, sourcing of requirements, uh, our major systems acquisition and streamlining, uh, and our program and line and staff offices, NOAA, they use different operating models, and rightly so, because they have different missions. Some of them are very centralized, and some of them are decentralized. And so AGO has to change how we do business with each of them uh, across those line of staff offices. So in 2012, almost 10 years ago, as I mentioned, uh, the idea of ProTech came into fruition. Uh, DOC approved the acquisition plan in 2015, and we are NOAA's mandatory source for professional, scientific, and technical services. 
We're a, a mandatory program for NOAA and DOC where applicable. Uh, we have a tier one designation for spend under management. We have our four domains. They're each aligned with a major NOAA mission area, satellite, fisheries, oceans, and weather. And we provide a cadre of partners from industry that cooperate with NOAA uh, and they become part of our environmental intelligence capability of our nation. For the current program, each multiple award IDIQ contract uh, had a perform, still has actually, a period of performance of five years, a two year base ordering period and three one year optional ordering periods. Task order is issued under the last option year uh, in any of those domains could last uh, five years themselves. The total ceiling across all four domains shared was $3 billion. And AGO uh, has been working very hard with our NOAA clients, our line staff offices, to gracefully transition those contracts that were prior to ProTech uh, to the proper ProTech domain and compete them under task order competitions. A small note about our small business reserve feature. This was uh, part of the ProTech, the current ProTech program, and our goal here was to make sure that up to 75% of the prime awards went to a small business or a further socioeconomic category, uh, and we targeted women-owned small businesses, hub zones, and service-disabled veteran-owned small businesses. And as you can see from the box on the right-hand side, the satellite domain, which was the first domain awarded, uh, exceeded the goal slightly, with 78% went to small businesses. Fisheries domain just uh, slightly missed it at 71%. Uh, the oceans domain was a split 50-50, 50 went to large and 50 went to small businesses or other socioeconomic uh, uh, categories. However, we knew that due to historic spend, we knew that uh, Ocean Stream would probably have a, a greater percentage of large business participation for the IDIQ Prime Awards. And Weather Domain uh, did not quite meet the goal as well, about 60% almost, uh, really 59, uh, and that's how that played out. However, we'll talk about this uh, further and how it played out with the task order competitions and awards in a future slide. We have uh, ProTech acquisition alerts. This is mostly for government folks, but uh, we hopefully came up with a little bit of a time saver for you. We went ahead and made a ProTech task order streamline acquisition plan effective in May 2019 uh, for use above uh, any ProTech task order above the simplified acquisition threshold. Currently it's $250,000 and below 75 million. Really just five pages and out of those five pages, uh, one is a title page, one is a signature page, and one is the milestone schedule. So really two pages of data that you have to fill out. A lot of it is just tick boxes. Uh, so we're hoping basically that putting that uh, streamlined acquisition plan uh, template together and having it read and approved can save people uh, a bunch of time. Uh, that, uh, By the way, that uh, streamlined acquisition plan has been approved for the ProTech 2.0 uh, program life as well. And of course, we had our mandatory use policy that came out in uh, the 2nd of July of 2019. And uh, both of those were on our ProTech public website. However, we've, uh, in accordance with uh, AGO policy, we've moved a bunch of those over to the, to the uh, Corporate Services Acquisition Division ProTech internal site. And I'll show you where those are. If you're a government person, you need access to that. We can get you access to it. Uh, if you are outside of the government, uh, you still have access to other public information on the ProTech public website. I did want to mention that we have our teaming on the fly concept, and it's not just a concept, it actually works. So what we told people all along is if you did not get a ProTech Prime Award, that you were not shut out of NOAA business and you were not shut out of ProTech uh, for either the five-year periods of performance under the current program or the future 2.0 program. So any company that does not get a ProTech Prime Award, we do go ahead and we publish the companies who do get the Prime Awards and we publish their contact information on our public website to include a, a name, a phone number, email address, and some company specific information if they have a website and their business size. And that way, any company can go ahead and take a look on our ProTech public website. They can look at the procurement forecasts and if there's a particular area that's posted there that they're strong in, they can reach out to the ProTech Primes and propose teaming opportunities. Uh, we're proud of that. That is about as uh, far we get into that. Uh, on the government side, we put the information out there and we let the companies decide whether or not they're going to go ahead with those teaming opportunities. But I am pleased to tell you uh, that we do know that 
uh, the concept works that companies have come to us and said, hey, we've been, we've been using this concept. We're quite happy with it. Please keep it up. So we are uh, pretty happy with that. Uh, you also see uh, the domain, uh, rather the DOC quarter report on our ProTech website has overall uh, ProTech uh, information to include task order awards, details. Uh, so if you're trying to track some of the ProTech data, I would go ahead and take a look there. Please be reminded that that DOC quarterly report is a look back. It's a report on the prior quarter, uh, and we've actually gone ahead and taken some other information that we've uh, gone ahead and parked on our ProTech domain-specific pages uh, where you can see the uh, forecasts, uh, procurement forecasts I already mentioned, and the task order awards. So that's where you want to go if you want to take a look at the domain-specific information. Some of the domain pages, the procurement forecasts and the task order awards are updated monthly. Some are updated more frequently, some are less frequently. It just depends on which domain we're talking about. For instance, the satellite domain seems to have uh, a less amount of requirements per year, but they're higher dollar amounts when compared to, say, the fisheries domain, which would be a lot more requirements, but at lower dollar amounts. So some current ProTech task order data. Uh, as of the end of FY22 Q1, we spent slightly over $1.1 billion. Of course, that's against our $3 billion ceiling. So we're about one third of the way uh, into the ceiling, uh, almost $2 billion left in the ceiling. We're about halfway through the program, so we're comfortable that that available ceiling will not be an issue under current ProTech. Uh, and as of the end of FY21, we had 230 task orders awarded for about $439 million obligated and uh, one point, uh, just over 1 point billion, not 1 point billion, <laughs> just over 1 billion uh, total value. Uh, that does not include the uh, minimum guarantee orders uh, for the IDIQ contracts. Uh, and that's tracking along nicely. Some more specific task order data for you. I mentioned the small business re reserve feature under the current ProTech domain. And here is how the small businesses have fared with the task order awards in the past five years. The satellite domain, 100% of the task orders, 59 of them went to small businesses or other socioeconomic category, so they're quite happy. Uh, fisheries domain, a little bit uh, less, but still pretty good, 91.4% uh, went to small businesses. Oceans domain currently, 100% small businesses, and weather domain, again, 100% task order awards went to small businesses. So obviously the small businesses are doing quite well uh, under the current ProTech program, and we expect to see that performance continue. So how does ProTech help? Okay, well, we help uh, our NOAA internal clients and our NOAA acquisition servicing divisions. So the ProTech PMO has dedicated account manager, somebody who really knows the specifics of the requirements in a particular domain because I stole those NOAA employees internally. <laughs> and they also function as the IDIQ level core. So we have folks uh, in my PMO who actually understand the requirements and some of the science behind that. So they really assist us uh, and the NOAA clients with taking a look at some of the requirements in doing the answer to those questions, you know, this is how we do things now, how can we do them better? So they assist with requirements development, uh, developing IGCEs, uh, taking a look at data and performance data and uh, analyzing it and seeing where we can do better and other questions. Uh, we provide training and tools to our NOAA clients and our AGO acquisition servicing divisions. Uh, we also do some oversight and we focus on process improvement and you'll see some of that as we talk about uh, uh, ProTech 2.0, and we're trying to achieve high performance quality and also where we can reduce acquisition timelines. Uh, and we also engage heavily with our ProTech Prime awardees. One of the features that we have in the ProTech PMO is called a ProTech Scope Review Capabilities, Capabilities Analysis Report. So if a NOAA client office comes to us and says, hey, I have a requirement, uh, does it fit this particular domain uh, and what kind of task order level competition level should it be? So I put some data up there to show you uh, that we pretty much, uh, as you can tell, fisheries, as I mentioned, has a lot more requirements. They seem to have the most going across each year. Uh, however, look at the response time. Our team uh, takes that data, does a good thorough scrub of it and gets a report back to our NOAA clients I don't think anything's topped out of more than a four day average, uh, except for a little bit in fisheries uh, in FY19 and FY21, but pretty much the rest of them 
around a three day or less, uh, even a two day turnaround. So we're getting that answer back to our NOAA clients in pretty rapid fashion. So we're not affecting any acquisition timelines and we can help folks as they make their decisions. That scope review uh, capability analysis report can function as the market research for the task order contracting officer. So that's a big time savings for you all. However, if for some reason you need to know more information or you'd like to get some more information out of uh, the capabilities of the, the ProTech contractors, if, if you don't uh, want to go directly to their websites and take a look at what their websites say, we can, our ProTech PMO, we can conduct market research for the task order COs. So we're saving time for you because we're taking that work off your plate. We can do RFIs to our ProTech primes. We can collate the data, uh, analyze it, and get it back to you. So hopefully you'll find that helpful. Other ProTech tools that are available. We can also do a best fit analysis. Sometimes I know a program office will come to us and say, well, we don't really know which domain this should fall under. Can you help us decide? And we can go ahead and do a best fit analysis on the requirement and make that recommendation back to the NOAA program office and their acquisition servicing division. Happy to do that. We also have an independent government cost estimating tool. So we can track invoices for task order awards uh, and use recent task order awards in this IGCE tool. So when an office comes to us and says, what do we think the cost this should be, we can go ahead and use that data for frankly recent and relevant awards to come up with an accurate IGCE for you. Uh, we can also do invoice tracking on task orders to assist uh, no program offices. As some of you are aware, there is a intent and push in the government right now and especially in DOC about transferring some risk from the government uh, over the contractor side of the house and also if we can to reduce the labor hour contracts that we're doing. So we can do an invoice tracker for you and graphically depict to you. We can take a look at different labor art categories and show you on a chart uh, basically where that level of effort might be smooth and static and the same for some number of years in a row or where it might not be. And that might help those offices when they decide to shift from a labor art contract to either a firm fixed price contract or a hybrid which would be part firm fixed price and part labor hour if there are some areas where we really can't forecast what that level of effort's gonna be. We're happy to do that. We can also do a spend analysis for you and take a look at where you might be spending and where your trending line is against a particular um, ceiling price on a task order. So we're happy to help you out with that as well. And of course, we always coordinate meetings for our NOAA clients with the ProTech Primes. Uh, we can help with uh, industry days and reverse industry days. Uh, we're happy to do any of those uh, all the time. As I mentioned, our websites have gone under a change. They're uh, going over to a Drupal format. So the information is still there. It just looks a little bit different. This is the, pro the new uh, ProTech uh, home page, as you can see. And there's probably a couple more links under the related resources we went ahead and made sure that our ProTech 101, which is for the public, some training slides are there, as well as our government and uh, contractor employee interaction slides. Both of those lessons are now on the ProTech home site as well, easy to find. And you can then go ahead and click on each particular domain area to find those domain specific information that I already mentioned, the task or rewards, the procurement forecasts, and any of the particular things that the different domains wanted to put on their websites, their pages, and have for public use. Sorry, I'm not a good cut and paster. I tried to, to make a, a domain page uh, look good, and obviously I failed. But this is what one of the ProTech domain homepages looks like. This is satellite. And as you can see, instead of the drop down menus, the different data is posted there with links underneath uh, the, the main homepage. We do have a ProTech intranet, and this is for government employees only. And as I mentioned, some of the information that we had on the prior ProTech public website, a lot of our templates and things that are clearly for the government personnel, you know, how we do our business, those things are being moved over to this uh, internal site. If you're a government employee and need access to it, please reach out to us at the ProTech PMO, any of my staff or I, we can get you access. And that will include, uh, there's a new link there that's not shown in this picture for our ProTech ordering guide, which is now on the internal site. And for those of you who are interested in ProTech 2.0, uh, so here's the status of that. Uh, we have the same four domains as the current program, no change there. I'm pleased to report that DOC approved the ProTech 2.0 AP the end of October this year. 
Still, we're a mandatory program for NOAA in DOC, Tier 1 spend on our management designation, no change there. Our shared sailing, though, is just under $8 billion. That is obviously an increase uh, over the current $3 billion sailing of the current program, and the reason why is right underneath. So we got approval in the ProTec 2.0 uh, AP to go ahead and do a 10-year period of performance. So we have a five-year base ordering period and a five-year option ordering period. That's obviously an increase almost double from the current program. And of course, task orders awarded in the last year of the uh, five-year option period could have a periodicity of 10 years themselves. So this is a long-term commitment. We think the ProTech program has done quite well with our industry partners and our NOAA client offices, and we're looking to improve that. And obviously, we're working out uh, doing that. Uh, the satellite uh, 2.0 uh, domain, the RFP, uh, already closed, uh, 6 January 2022. And I really have nothing for to say about that because uh, we're undergoing our evaluation. So for the ProTech 2.0 schedule, you can take a look, and this is obviously is notional schedule in subject of change. Uh, I put there where the current period of performance ends uh, and when we're hoping to get uh, the Protect 2.0 awarded. Uh, I will mention that the satellite domain, the current one, was supposed to end uh, June of 2022. Uh, we went ahead and extended that uh, until December of 2022 to make sure we had coverage on requirements. So hopefully that will help everybody else. If we need to do that with the other Protect, uh, current Protect uh, contracts, we'll take a look at that in the future. If we need to exercise that, we will take a look at it. But there are the potential dates for the awards for the follow-on ProTech 2.0 domains. And when I mentioned innovation, we are uh, implementing some innovation techniques uh, in ProTech 2.0 and lessons learned from the ones we're using in the ProTech Satellite 2.0, we'll go ahead and roll those into the following domains uh, and we're hoping to streamline things. So we've obviously had industry days in the current ProTech program. We continue those industry days under ProTech 2.0 uh, to get uh, industry feedback on our draft and final SOWs because we've had that feedback. We want to get your input and make a stronger uh, statement of work that covers NOAA's needs for both our clients and to make sure the industry has input. We have some innovative evaluation tools. We have asked the companies to do a self-evaluation for phase one. We went ahead with an advisory down select notice for phase one and that's going well. We're going to use confidence factors as our ratings uh, and we hope to implement uh, hope to implement on-the-spot consensus ratings and then potentially oral presentations for phase two for the management approach. This is really specifically right now for the ProTech 2.0 satellite domain, but as I mentioned, we're going to roll those lessons learned and the things that are good we're going to keep. Uh, you can probably expect to see those in the follow-on 2.0 domain competitions, uh, and if we have more to share with any other techniques we intend to use, we'll certainly let you all know. So that is the end of my presentation, and I will close that out now, and then I will share my camera, and hopefully we have some questions. It looks like we have about 131 people here today, so hello. So um, just a reminder to everyone, attendees, you can type your questions into the chat panel um, in GoToWebinar. And I don't have anything here yet, but I'll just give it a minute while people are typing. Hopefully I covered everything, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so it looks like some people did submit questions in advance and we're um, wondering if those will be reviewed here or just emailed after the fact. Let me go ahead and answer those. Shoot, I got one of those. Restart your computer now. Hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> I will get those answers in one second. Sorry. You can all see my screen. All good. Yes, yeah, so we received four questions uh, earlier in the week. Uh, and I did uh, put some answers together for them, and here they are as soon as Word opens up. Okay, we are getting some other questions while it's loading. Um, 
the first question here, ProTech in itself does not pay for the services, but the benefiting entity is expected to pay. Is that correct? Yes, uh, AGO has been operating, uh, all of AGO uh, has been operating under a fee for service model uh, that was implemented shortly uh, after I arrived or, or before I arrived, NOAA, in late 2016. So that's been the operating model. Uh, AGO has been working with our NOAA clients uh, for some time now. Okay, um, the next question here is how does the new five year ordering period work? That is, will there be two option periods of five years each? No, there'll be a, a base ordering period of five years and a single option ordering period of five years. So there's your 10 years. But as I mentioned, uh, task orders could be awarded in the last year of the optional period, and that task order could have a period of performance uh, of five years itself as well. Okay, um, we do have a few more questions here. Um, the presentation only, uh, let's see, should the, should the presentation be weighted equally among all the questions? The, the presentation only has one technical question. Should the presentation be weighted equally among all the questions? I'm not sure what you mean. Um, okay, let's let's go to the next one. Um, will NOAA request new size certifications when exercising the option, or will companies keep their size status for the full 10-year period? That depends on the particular domain. Uh, as you're aware, the satellite 2.0 domain, or if you're not aware, I'll tell you now, the satellite 2.0 domain is a small business set-aside total for the IDIQ awards under satellite 2.0. So we'll probably end up asking uh, companies to recertify prior to the uh, option. Okay, um, one of the questions here, could you speak a bit more to environmental intelligence? No. <laughs> so environmental intelligence, right, is, is a concept uh, but really what happens, uh, and, and I've heard this from folks before, but it's the ProTech program, you you take a look at the, the task areas that we have in the different domains that are posted on the website, uh, the public website. You take a look at the task orders and areas, and the language in there is a little vague, but that's, that's not a bug, that's a feature. So we have that language as a little bit vague on purpose so that the real details, the meat and potatoes, comes at the task order level when you see the task order request for proposals because we can't possibly know uh, five years in advance let alone 10 right especially with the how technology is increasing and changing we can't know exactly what our requirements are going to be so as i mentioned the the idiq contracts are a bit generic in their language but the real what we need you to do comes out at the task order level i hope that answers that Okay, well, um, oh, sorry, next question here. Can you talk to the fact that SBs are defined differently across the domains? For example, an SB under satellite will not necessarily be an SB under weather. Any chance you can harmonize this so an SB will be an SB regardless of domain? That's more a function of the NAICS code and how those companies meet the size standard at, uh, under those NAICS. So I do not think we can level it, uh, if that's the correct term, uh, at my level. Okay, has NOAA considered changing the NAICS codes for weather, fisheries, and oceans to facilitate a somewhat larger size standard? Uh, so uh, that's the, the NAICS is the NAICS one that I just mentioned, the NAICS code. Uh, we review them uh, and take a look. Uh, and if we are going to change them, uh, we'll let you know. Uh, you can see our ProTech brochure on our website has the current NAICS. Uh, what happened, uh, and those of you who track the satellite domain, uh, the current one, understand that the NAICS that we awarded the satellite domain under was retired and that work was put under two different NAICs. However, uh, we still use that NAICs uh, 
that we award under. So um, could we change the NAICS? Perhaps. Will we? Um, we'll let you know, but we'll be very transparent about that. We should have an, uh, answers for you about any NAICS changes, certainly by the time we have an industry day uh, for each domain, uh, and hopefully that'll help you out. Okay, and um, got some clarification here returning to this question. It says there are about 10 management questions and one technical question for the presentation and about 25 slides total. Should we have about two slides per question spend equal time among the questions? So let me ask a question back in response to that question. Are you talking about a task order RFP? Okay, and we'll see if they respond. Um, the next question here, does the fact that ProTech is under a total 10-year period of performance mean that individual awards are also for 10 years? No, uh, most task orders have a period performance of five years. But of course, they could, they could be less. It depends on the nature of the requirement. Okay, and um, while we're waiting for people to type in some of their questions, just a reminder that um, if there's anything that doesn't get answered here, um, the presenter can follow up with you by email. We have your names and emails and we can contact you. Um, and uh, you had some questions that were emailed previously. Did you want to go over those also um, while we're waiting to see if any other questions come through here? Yes, yeah, so I'll go them right now. So uh, the first question we got was, will there be any task orders for large businesses? And my answer is, well, that depends on the requirements in each domain. Uh, we've learned from the current ProTech program in all four domains that task order competitions have resulted in a large percentage of task orders being competed as small business or other socioeconomic categories set aside. Uh, that doesn't mean that there won't be any opportunities for large businesses. I think the satellite domain actually, the current satellite domain has at least one full and open uh, task order competition this year. Uh, we might see more. Uh, it just depends on the requirement. Um, for Protec, for the other Protec 2.0 domains, that's uh, basically to be determined, right? So our satellite domain is a total, our satellite 2.0 domain uh, is going to be a total small business set aside as already mentioned. But that doesn't mean large businesses are shut out right, of the ProTech 2.0 satellite domain. Uh, maybe they're going to be on some of those teams with those small businesses uh, so that they can uh, hopefully uh, help out those small businesses with awards and pursuing task orders. Uh, also, as I mentioned with that teaming on the fly concept, they can follow the procurement forecasts that are on our domain pages, and they can reach out to those ProTech primes and propose uh, teaming agreements. And so I'd recommend that all the companies out there continue to review our Pro ProTech public website and the procurement forecast because we hopefully you'll find them helpful. Question two I got was, what new contract support does NOAA need for environmental resiliency disaster relief? And my answer, unfortunately, is I am not familiar with the details of that particular requirement. Uh, you'd probably have to reach out to a ProTech uh, PMO account manager for whatever domain that requirement normally resides in and, and ask them for help or talk to that NOAA program office or uh, the acquisition servicing division if you know it. Uh, for question three uh, was when does the new ProTech satellite enterprise IDIQ begin uh, and how much are our ProTech vehicles being used now compared to when we first began using them and how close to the dollar ceiling uh, did we get on the satellite enterprise uh, IDIQ? So uh, answering those in turn, um, we hope to award the ProTech satellite domain uh, in FY23 Q1. Uh, and as for the how much are our ProTech vehicles being used, I don't know if it is a really definitive answer to your question, uh, but if you take a look at the DOC uh, quarterly reports that we post to our ProTech website, and if you track those that we've been posting uh, for the past three or four years, you can definitely see all that detailed data as to task orders awarded uh, and which domains had more task orders, which had less. We also uh, put a lot of data into that report, right? So you can see which companies had the number of task orders and how much they were for. Uh, you can see the small business percentage of the task orders. Really, hopefully, all the questions you might have uh, for the overall program are located in those DOC quarter reports. Again, as a reminder, the DOC quarter reports are a, are, are a 
three month look back, right? We're reporting on the quarter that just happened. Uh, so if you take a look at the report in Q4 each year, you know, you'll see that whole uh, year uh, data there as well. That should help you out. And as I already mentioned, uh, the ceiling, we just went over 1.1 billion against the $3 billion shared ceiling. Uh, there's no ceiling per domain. Uh, so we're pretty comfy with almost uh, 2 billion you know, left that we're not gonna have any ceiling issues under the current uh, ProTech program. And uh, the, the weather domain, which was the last one that was awarded, that performance runs through January, 2025. So we've still got three years left. Those were the four questions that I received in via email, and I hopefully I've answered all those questions except for the one that I didn't have details on. Sorry. Okay, we do have um, some more questions here. Um, will WOSB and hub zone still be preferred socioeconomic designations? Uh, I'm assuming that means uh, under the ProTech 2.0 program, and we'll be doing small business set asides uh, and we do hope to see uh, good participation from WASBs, women-owned small businesses, SDVOSB, service disabled, veteran-owned small business, and hub zones as well. So yes. Okay. What approaches might be used for building climate services and private sector opportunities? Is climate going to go under PT weather? Not clear who the appropriate program officer or CEO is at this time. So the beauty of the ProTech program is, right, a, a requirement could go under any domain. You'll you'll see certainly that there are, there are certain requirements that really have a natural home, right? But if some don't, uh, our ProTech PMO can work with the NOAA program office and, as I mentioned before, do kind of a best fit analysis, see where that work would really fit best under a particular domain. So we, we can work with the program office and with the acquisition servicing division to help make that recommendation to the task order CO. Okay, given the significant change in the acquisition process and deliverables on ProTech 2.0, do you plan to have an EN process where you seek clarification from vendors so they're not excluded on mere technicality? Uh, sorry, did, did you say an EN process? Um, yeah, let me go ahead and put the question in the chat for you so you can read it if you'd like. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, so, so I guess my answer is uh, when we go ahead and, and put out the request for RFPs, you know, the companies have to frankly give it their best shot to give a full and complete answer. Um, I don't know if I'd say, I don't know if I'd say a technicality is mere. It, it depends on, you know, what information a company did or did not provide as part of their response. I hope that helps. Okay, and we have a question here um, regarding the questions that were submitted in advance. Um, they they didn't see if you got to question number four. Um, did you receive that one? Let me hold on. Let me go back to it real quick. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't page down enough. My problem. My fault. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I did get it. Sorry, completely missed that one. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. So I'll read, I'll read it aloud and then I'll give my answer. So question four was, if we can agree that diversity inclusion is important to everyone, why aren't contractors allowed to participate in diversity inclusion activities except on their own time? Is there a way for contractors to participate in DNI activities slash committees without using their own time? Does change start pre-award or do you have to modify the contracts on an individual basis? I feel like DNI should be in the SOW as optional instead of not being written in the SOW at all. My questions refer refers to those contractors that is not in a diversity officer, diversity lead and similar role. For example, if a contractor that is a scientist wants to participate, why does he or her have to use their own time? 
Uh, and here's my answer. So while diversity inclusion is important, uh, I would ask you to please review the AGO's government and contractor employee interaction training course on the Commerce Learning website. If you don't have access to the Commerce Learning website, don't worry. So we have actually posted those same slides, that same course, on our ProTech public website home, homepage. Take a look for them under the related resources section. And there's two sets of those slides. One is a condensed version and one is an extended version. The extended version goes into more detail, obviously, with some scenarios as to what is allowed and what is not allowed. Uh, the answer, though, is different rules and regulations apply to and for government employees, as well as to and for contractor employees. We also call them uh, NOAA affiliates. Uh, this is fitting and proper, and it avoids the appearance of impropriety or favoritism, unprofessional conduct, issues with ethical standards, or potential procurement integrity violations. The government awards contracts for performance. Contractor participation in events unrelated to that performance uh, whether they're uh, morale building events, team building, or DNI events, uh, if allowed, are only allowed on the contractor's personal time and cannot be, and a, and a contractor cannot be required, requested, or expected to participate by government personnel. So I know that's not the answer you were looking for uh, as I read through the question, uh, but the answer is no. I hope that helps. Okay, so I do not have any um, remaining questions here, but let's give everyone another minute to um, type things in. And just a reminder, anything that we don't get to, we'll follow up after. Um, and uh, those questions will be given to the presenter. Okay, I'm not seeing anything coming through here, so I think we might be able to finish up a little bit early today, um, give everybody about 15 minutes back. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to add, Jay, before we finish up here? I would just like to say it's a lovely afternoon here in D.C., so hopefully you can get a walk out today and a breath of fresh air, and everybody stay safe and well. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person uh, as soon as possible when it's safe to do so. So thank you very much for your time today. Great. Um, so thank you again, Jay, for joining us. Thank you to all of the attendees. Um, you will be able to find this presentation on YouTube. Um, that will be later this week. When the presentation ends, you will see a survey. If you could take the time to fill that out, we do use our surveys to improve marketing our library seminar service and to inform future seminar topics. Thank you all again for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. Have a good day. Thank you again.